All right, so much football on today's show, but it's time to talk some cricket now. Jamaica have one hand on the Cricket West Indies Super 50 Cup after remaining undefeated following the penultimate round of fixtures, which concluded earlier on Monday. All six teams were in action, and here's a look at all the results from the three matches. Where do we start? We start with Jamaica taking on the Windward Islands. Jamaica winning this one by three wickets. The win was 175 for nine. This match was reduced to 45 overs per side. Pearl Etienne top scored with 58. Janelia Glasgow got 38. Chanel Henry, career best figure, six for 31. Vanessa Watts, one for 22. And Jamaica in reply, they were cruising at one stage. 176 for seven is where they finished, 36.1 overs. Rashana Williams with 70. To Natasha McLean got a runner ball 50 and Gilbert 2 for 40, the pick of the Windward Islands bowler. So maximum points there for the Jamaicans as they take their fourth victory from as many matches. The Leeward Islands and Barbados, this was a very good match, a high scoring one. The Leeward Islands 255 for five from their 50 overs. Hector with 56, Amanda Edwards with 55. And in reply, Barbados 256 for five. Kaishona Knight getting 88. It was quite a fabulous knock. Alia Elaine scored 59, two for 48 for Shanisha Hector. Uh, bowling for the Leeward Islands. Barbados getting victory by five wickets. And in the day's other game, Trinidad and Tobago versus Guyana. Guyana batting first, 156 for eight from their 50 overs. This was at Connery. Shemaine Campbell, the West Indies middle order batter, getting 52. Shabika Gajnabi, 33. Karishma Ramrak, again among the wickets for the TNT team, 3 for 26. Leanne Kirby, 2 for 24. And Trinidad and Tobago in reply, bowled out for 95 in just 42 overs, a fourth straight defeat for Trinidad and Tobago. And Guyana getting, what, well, their third victory now. Uh, Samara Ramnath top scored with 24, Trinidad and Tobago. Monisar, 5 for 15 uh, for Guyana. And Latchman, 2 for 24, a 61 run victory for Guyana in that encounter. And yeah, Lance and Mariah, uh, this women's uh, Super 50 Cup. We've seen some good cricket. We've seen some bad cricket. We've seen some indifferent cricket. Today, I thought, was one of the better days for the tournament. I thought I saw a lot of quality cricket. And a number of the batters came to the party as well. High-scoring game, Barbados um, versus the Leeward Islands. Um, uh, Natasha McLean... Um, uh, getting a half century rashana williams getting a half century in victory for jamaica as the jamaicans close in on the title yeah i have to say i have been really impressed with what i've seen from the jamaican women cricketers to be very honest they've been great both with the bat and the ball also on the field they've really come together as a unit and i think that is the reason why we're speaking about them being undefeated so far with the leadership of Stefani Taylor, who she also has contributed with both bat and, of course, with the ball. Um, we had Shadeen Nation coming to the party. They had Rashada Williams stepping up when necessary. Today, I was also very, very happy to see Natasha McLean. She is somebody that has shown a lot of promise and of course, she's been inconsistent, and I'm happy to see her back today getting that half century, and I'm hoping that we can see more of that from her. Not to forget Chanel Henry. She is a player that I have the opportunity to, of course, um, speak to a bit more because she and my sister Karishma, they are really good friends, and, you know, whenever they're in West Indies camp and stuff, I'd have a quick word or two with Chanel. To me, I feel really, really good to see how she has grown as a player from when she started to now, and to the point where Chanel now is a person that you will expect to come to the party a match winner. And for me, you know, the Jamaican team really, really well deserved. Barbados as well. Barbados as well, they have been really good in this competition, even without 
Haley Matthews. And I think that is something that should be commended because many people felt as if Barbados would have been a pushover, seeing that their skipper, Haley Matthews, was not. So kudos to Kaisia Knight and her entire team for, of course, really playing competitive cricket. Now, where the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force is concerned, I am so disappointed. I have to say I'm disappointed with the batting performances of the ladies because I felt as if even when the bowlers came to the party, there was never a good competitive score for Trinidad and Tobago. And to me, it's something that they would have to go back now and talk about as a team and see how they can improve. There are youngsters that can be promising in the future, but as of now, they have to work on that. Lance? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. The 0-1-4 record that the TNT team has put on the board at the moment is, for me, the most surprising development in this Women's Super 50 tournament because uh, they have been, for a long time, one of the best teams in regional women's cricket. And uh, their feeder program has appeared to be better than most. Yes. You know, young teenagers getting into their, their team and, and doing well. So I think this was completely unexpected to lose all four of their games so far, the TNT team. So hugely disappointing for them. I quite like the advances that the Windwards have, have made. Yes. And uh, a lot of their middle order players, uh, Pearl Etienne, uh, Janelia Glasgow, Nerissa Crafton, um, getting a lot of runs consistently throughout yeah. the tournament. So I, I, and they gave Jamaica a really big run for the money today. So yeah. I, I like the fact that the Windwards have shown some improvement because for many years, the women's cricket in the Caribbean has been dominated by Barbados, Jamaica, and, and Trinidad and Tobago. Um, they have been perennial champions, shared over that period of time. So um, when you see Guyana beginning to improve, and the windward is showing marked improvement. Obviously, the Libras have a lot of work to do, although they were outstanding today against the Jamaican uh, team. Um, and um, when it was the Barbados team that they played against today, 255 they scored against yeah. Barbados. And Good Barbados, with the bat. Barbados have West Indies bowlers in their setup. So, uh, and they were unfortunate because there was a run out that wasn't given. A Barbados, Barbados batter was run out. If you look back at the replay, the, she was run out, but the umpires didn't, didn't, didn't see it that way. So the Leewards would be disappointed with that. But hugely impressed with how the Leewards played today against Barbados because um, scoring 255 against the Barbados team for the Leewards would have been something that was hard to anticipate. Yeah, and of course, um, when you look at the table, Jamaica will play Guyana in their final match on Wednesday. And uh, based on how things look, we haven't gotten the updated table yet, but I suspect that Guyana will need to win that match with bonus points to leapfrog the Jamaicans. So Jamaica very, very close to lifting the title and a significant difference from what we saw last year because um, last time out, Stefani Taylor didn't complete the tournament, um, but they got just two wins. They were um, second from bottom in the table. Um, so a lot of improvement made on the part of the Jamaicans and the top players have come to the party. Um, Stefani Taylor, Shadeen Nation, um, Chanel Henry, we saw today Rashonda Williams, um, we saw today Natasha McLean, the players with, ex with West Indies experience showing their quality in regional cricket. And that's what you want to see. Ideally, I would love to see some more of the younger players, not just on the Jamaica team, but across the board, coming to the party in this tournament. But you have to give credit um, to those who have. They have utilized their experience and uh, they have really done well. I'm a big fan of Chanel Henry, by the way, Lance and Moran. I think I said this last year that I think she is the type of player who is the future of West Indies cricket because of her all-round athletic ability. Um, she's able to hit the ball. Um, she can bowl well and she is a very good fielder. And uh, I think... And I have to be careful how I say this, but I think over time, a lot of the women who have played for the West Indies have not been athletic enough. Yeah. Um, and I think for West Indies women's cricket to move forward in the way that we want it to, you need more athletic women. And for me, Chanel Henry is one of those. And because she has the ability to do everything well on a cricket field, um, then I think that she is really a massive part of the future of West Indies women's cricket.
Yeah, the athleticism is something that is important, Ricardo, and you just mentioned it, because I've said for many years on this, this show, uh, part of the Australian strength, apart from their technical quality, is their physical fitness mm. and their athleticism in the Australian team. Um, I, I saw those girls uh, when they were on tour in Barbados about six years or so ago. I was staying at the Acro Hotel on some other business, and they were staying there as we're well. We're sure, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I saw them, and they were just, they were just a picture of physical conditioning. Yeah. You know, and, and I can't divorce that from their success. Yeah, very much the case. Tell you what, Lance and Mariah, let's sprint into a break. We want to get to 6 o'clock quickly so Lance can go do some other business. <laughs> Thank you.